we, we support the work of the Gambling Commission and we support the prevalent study work that they've been conducting. Naturally, we're concerned that there's been an increase in problem gambling and we would call on the government to fund further research. We're worried that the Gambling Commission's budget for research could be cut. So we want that to be reversed and we want uh, a future prevalent study to be, to be well funded. And uh, we'd also want there to be uh, a, a, an, an increased emphasis perhaps on, on the industry looking again at these figures and maybe considering uh, the amount of money that they give towards organisations such as GAMCARE to fund problem gambling. What do, what do you attribute the increase in particular areas of online gambling? Online gambling, like gambling in general, seems to have increased simply because there's more availability and I think this is something the churches have commented on for several years. If you increase the amount of gambling, then that will have a, an increase in the amount of problem gambling. So it, it seems a, a, a natural result and, and because of that there should be an increase in the, in the protections for players and the increase in availability of treatment. And about women, there's been an increase in women gambling. Why do you think that is? Again, I think there was a point made in the report about normalisation, but I think we're seeing gambling being seen as a more normal activity. Again, I don't think the church is a prohibitionist, but we're asking people to be extremely careful about gambling, to not just think of it as another leisure activity, to not think of it as something they'll win money on, um, but something that does contain risks, and a small percentage of people will uh, end up as problem gamblers. And the, the statistics seem to suggest that up to 450,000 people in the UK could now be problem gamblers. At the Salvation Army, you often deal with people whose lives are wrecked as a result of problem drinking or gambling or other areas of addiction. Um, do you see um, the results of this increase coming into your hostels? We, we certainly have people in our hostels who, who have suffered, uh, they suffer from complex needs which often involve alcohol and gambling. I think one of the interesting things about the report was they said that people who are most at risk from gambling actually indulge in many different types of gambling activity. So there seems to be a correlation there with people perhaps from lower uh, socioeconomic groups, with people who have other complex needs and also people who, who do multiple forms of gambling. So you mentioned 400,000 problem gamblers. Is that an increase from how many? It seems that the, the lower end of the scale last time around was about 280,000, and that seems to have gone up to anywhere up to 450,000. Naturally, the, the, the NATSEN are being cautious about their figures, but I think the overall result the Gambling Commission are coming out with is that there has been a, stati a statistically significant increase in problem gambling, and that is obviously a matter of concern. And we support the work of the Gambling Commission, we support the work that Nat said in this report, and now the onus is on the government to respond to this, and uh, importantly, not to lib further liberalise gambling machines, uh, such as a recent consultation document on gambling machines suggested. And um, why do you think the number of problem gamblers has increased? Again, I think if you increase the availability of gambling as a percentage, then the number of, of problem gamblers will, will show an increase. So if that's going to happen and you're going to liberalise gambling further, then you need to, con you need to uh, consider providing increased support for gamblers, increased funding for problem gambling and increased research, not decreased research. We can't, we can't walk blindly into an increase in problem gambling. Well, what, what, what I should, I'd like to ask Heather to answer the first question in due course, but let me just do the second one first. Um, um, what, what I said was this survey doesn't tell us what the increases in total gambling are, um, but clearly um, it, this is against the background of um, you know, a change in the whole gambling regime in the 2005 Act following the Flood Report, um, and if you ask why people gamble more, obviously potential candidates are first the restrictions on advertising were removed at that time uh, by the government of the day. Um, there's been innovation in the industry, there have been new products, so you can think of many reasons why um, gambling uh, prevalence overall has increased. Um, I was merely making the point that this report doesn't answer those questions. Yeah. I'm actually going to deal with the one that you mentioned last first, which is what, what percentage of the increase is attributable to changes in the national lottery. And actually what we see is not very much at all. The vast majority of the changes, the increase in participation, is due to increases in people taking part in more other types of gambling. So things like scratch cards, things like um, online casino games and slot machine style games, charity lotteries and also FOBTs, the, uh, the machines and club makers. So when you exclude people who are national lottery only gamblers from our base, you actually see quite a clear upward trend rising from 46% in 1999 to 56% in 2010. Thank you for the last one. So that, that's explaining a slightly different picture of what we're seeing if people take it part in different types of activities. The online gambling, which you mentioned, we um, see an increase, a small increase in the proportion of people taking part in online gambling activities, particularly in the 
online bingo casino and slot machine style games, that's increased from 3% to 5%. The football pools, however, has had a big drop between 1999 and 2010, where it fell from 9% down to 4%. The slot machines, that, that, between 2010 and uh, 2007, that stayed relatively, um, at a level, relatively similar. There was a, a decrease from 1999. Um, the horse racing basically fluctuates. So what we see in the estimates were 13% in 1999, 17% in 2007, and 15% in 2010. So it's one of those things where it varies with no clear pattern. I just add two things. I mean, I think um, Brian did an excellent summary of the report. I think two things that I would bring to the fore. I mean, there's one thing: gambling is definitely changing, and I think the decrease in the national lottery we've seen and the increase in other forms of activity has definitely taken place. I would actually associate that with what I would call the feminisation of gambling. There are certainly lots more females gambling now than, than, than did before. The Commission is neither to promote nor discourage gambling. I mean, Parliament decided to make gambling legal and to make it available on certain terms. Our role is to make sure that where it does play, where it does take place, it takes place safely, that crime is kept out, uh, vulnerable people are protected, and it happens fair, uh, openly and fairly. So um, that's a slightly, um, sort of, a cir if you like, a circum, but could shoot, not putary answer to your question. Uh, but I mean, our position is, is not to say that gambling is good or bad, because Parliament made a decision and then set us up to make sure that where it takes place, um, it takes place properly. So that, that is the Commission's position. Um, obviously, individuals society will have different views about this and of course um, this survey tells you about people's attitudes towards gambling. It tells you interestingly that although three quarters of people gambling in one form or another, um, I can't remember the exact proportion, but I think it's about that same number, have negative attitudes.